Laissez-les, bonjour, roulez, which means let the good times roll. Welcome to Michael's Kitchen, where my experience has been influenced by some of the world's most famous chefs and has led to my 36 years in the culinary field. Now let me tell you, I am the creator of the jam burrito. It is the burrito that jams. What is the jam burrito? It is smoked andouille sausage, rice, etouffee sauce, creole sauce, chicken etouffee all wrapped up in a warm tortilla. It is the burrito that jams. It is a party in your mouth. We can also make multiple other dishes that, with the jam burrito. We have bowls which is the jam burrito without the tortilla. We have authentically blackened catfish or barbecue catfish. We have crawfish etouffee, y'all. We also have that old New Orleans staple, red beans and rice. You might say, who am I? I am Michael Brown, 50 years old, and I hail from Phoenix, Arizona, by way of New York. Let's start with a demonstration. I'm just going to demonstrate how to slice sausage on the bias. This happens to be smoked on dilly sausage. It's a New Orleans staple. And when you slice it on the bias, you just want to cut on an angle, just like that, about a half an inch thick. What happens is you, you, you give more surface to the sausage to cook and to caramelize. And the flavors will come out bursting. OK, there you go. And that's a bias cut sausage. Now I'm going to move that to the side here. Then I'm going to take how to butterfly a breast of chicken. You want to take the chicken at its thickest part, put your fingers down on it, on it like that, and just basically slice down the middle without cutting all the way through. Okay? Then you're going to lay that chicken on its back, and you're going to take your plastic. And really, actually, you want to actually lay it on its stomach because you don't want it to rip the chicken. Take your plastic and just give it a couple of pounds. And that makes your chicken able to be stuffed. So you can put all your stuffing on the inside and just kind of roll it over. And then you have your stuffed chicken. Now, we're also going to take a little dicing of Apples, these apples have been peeled and they've been sitting in fresh orange juice for a little bit. We're going to slice it like this. When it gets real good too, you can do it without looking. And these are your diced apples. Now, the reason why I brought these ingredients in today because that is going to be part of what I'm going to show you, the dishes that we prepared for you today. This is a, an American, a New Orleans breakfast, a staple New Orleans breakfast, scrambled eggs and cheese, hash browns, smoked andouille sausage, toast points, and a slice of orange. Now, for lunch or dinner, you can go and have a stuffed boneless chicken breast with mushrooms, smoked andouille sausage, diced apples. It sits on top of a mock shoe, which is a Creole version of a vegetable medley with uh, hash browns on top. You can throw a sauce on there, any one of your favorite sauces, but there you have it. It's a very tender and juicy dish. Hey guys, thanks for visiting my kitchen. And let me tell you about my concept. John Burrito's Cajun Grill, America's first fast casual Cajun restaurant. This is going to be fun. This is going to be exciting. Hey, this is New Orleans. This is like a trip to New Orleans without playing, paying the, the flight ticket. Let me tell you why. You're going to walk into this place and you're going to see this beautiful, jazzy New Orleans atmosphere. The floors will be cobblestone. The walls will be pastel colors like that of the French Quarter. You'll see wrought iron fencing. You'll see jazz memorabilia. The music, what? The toe tapping music will be coming in your ear. Louis Armstrong, Billy Holiday, when the Saints go marching in, y'all. And then you kind of stroll on over and you say, what is all this food over here that I see? It's encased in a Bayou Shack look. 
So where you get your food looks like the bayou. You have that contrast between the bayou and the French Quarter. When you go over to the food, you get this wonderful greeting from the people who are just happy to serve you. The food and the smells are just going to just make you just so happy. And let me just tell you this. We know that spices are natural endorphins. You know that, right? Well, anyway, that's another story. But let me just go on and tell you this. This concept is going to be a success, and I'm going to tell you why. Because we've done so many things very, very ritualistically over the years. But let's try something different now. New Orleans is the number one culinary capital of the world. So why not let's experience it right here in a neighborhood near you. It's going to be successful because it's comfort food. And people enjoy getting value for their money. It's going to be successful because of the service. We have a trilogy of a way of coming about serving people. Great service, great food, and great atmosphere. And now at a neighborhood near you. Why is this the next step? Because the people have been begging me to open a restaurant. It to fave. Let the good times roll. Why is this important to me? Because this has been my life's work. It's what I've been working for for my entire life. People are counting on me, and I want to deliver. What type of life will I have? Or how I'll be giving up? What I'll be giving up? Not a thing, y'all. Because when you do what you love, you only get better and better. You might ask, what's at stake? I would say to you, rare or medium rare? <laughs> Just joke. What's at stake here is that I may not get a chance to do it as soon as possible. But if I team up with the Food Network channel, today is our day. Competitive with my cooking and my recipes. I just can't do something the way other people do it. I always add my own twist, and that makes it unique to me. And that has been very effective for the people that I've been feeding over these last 36 years. I'm competitive in sports. I was the captain of my wrestling team. I was homecoming king of my high school. My Louisiana bread pudding won the best dessert at the Great Chefs Contest. My food truck won the best of the top 10 food trucks in the Phoenix area in 2012. The atmosphere in my kitchen can often be described as high octane, as intense. And the reason why it's intense is because I have high expectations. I expect things to be done right, decently, and in order. You cannot come to me half-stepping. You've got to come with your A-game, and I'm going to let you know about it if you don't. I've often been described as sometimes a little bit maniacal in the kitchen, but it's all for a good purpose. For example, this egg needs to be placed right here and nowhere else on the plate. When I put that plate down in front of you, it should have that same impression on you every time you eat it. If you don't do that, you're going to hear from me. If you don't keep your station clean, I will talk to you about it. If you leave your imprints in a jumborito while you're making it and don't handle it with tender love and care, I will let you know about it. But at the end of the day, when the curtain goes up, it's showtime. Winning this competition means that I would finally be able to open my doors to all my customers who have been asking about it for years. I can bring the New Orleans experience to the people. My creations, Chef Michael, the only place you can get it is Jumbo Rito's Cajun Grill. Great food, great service, great atmosphere. Let the good times roll. Les élèves bon temps roulé. I've been asked whether or not I think I can win this contest. I may not come with all the fanfare or the bells and whistles. In fact, I'm the quiet one, the one you need to watch out for. I come in clean and I leave dirty, but I get the job done. You may have the prettiest pie or the nicest ditch, but do you have the staying power? Competition? <laughs> Bring it.